unpaid care and domestic work, which includes all non-remunerated work within the household or community. As FIA accounts for $10 trillion of global output per year. That is roughly equivalent to 13% of the global GDP. Yet despite this verse and invaluable contribution to society and the economy, it is not included in official GDP calculations, very callous, and remains largely absent from government policies and consequently limited investment. In Uganda here, Oxfam and UONET, uh, UONET's work on unpaid care and domestic work is informed by a research on the gender roles and the care economy in Ugandan households carried out in 2018. The report shows that women spend at least eight hours of unpaid work a day, the same amount of time people in paid employment actually dedicate to their job on average. Men, on the other hand, actually spend about four hours a day on unpaid care and domestic work, just half of the time women spend. To expand more on these, uh, we do have, uh, that is Wilson Senyonyi, a gender and protection officer with Oxfam, and uh, we also have Pisi Musimenta, a teacher, lecturer, and researcher with Makere University, both of whom join me right now on set to expand more on the issue of unpaid care and domestic work, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. A very good afternoon. Peace Musimenta and Wilson Senyonyi. Welcome. Thank you. First of all, let me start with you, uh, Wilson Senyonyi. Unpaid care and domestic work. When we say this, what do we mean? Thank you very much. So, unpaid care and domestic work, it means all that work that is done at home, but in most cases, it is not recognized. Some actually do it, but they don't know that they are doing it. And some of this work uh, mm. includes washing clothes, um, yes. uh, washing clothes, taking care of the sick, um, bathing children, and nursing the, those that are, are sick at, at home. Uh, it can include also other things like fetching water, sweeping the courtyard, so all that kind of work that is done at home to ensure the well-being of, of home is what we call unpaid care and domestic work. So I'm very sure the viewers uh, out there, you might be asking yourself, am I really part and partial of this? Yes, you are very part and partial of it, mm. but maybe I've been doing it mm. without recognizing it. And mm. I also know that in most cases... Uh, well, so I believe that face mask is stifling your ability to speak, but under the respect of uh, observing SOPs, I think you can remove it so that mm -hmm. the viewer can be able to understand what you're actually saying. Entirely remove it, please, so that we can have a very, very great conversation. So yeah. why should we care about unpaid care and domestic work, Wilson? Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, all of us ought to care about unpaid care mm. and domestic work. Yes, sir. Because this is a collective responsibility mm. for both men, women, boys, and girls. Mm. And if we do not care about it, at the end of the day, we shall have to face the consequences. Uh, for example, I'm very sure there are many people outside they were saying, I am educated, I have a degree, I have this job, but I can tell you, without recognizing care work, that you cannot be able to do your work. For example, when I was coming here to NTV at home, mm. I had to make sure that there is someone who is remaining behind to take care of the children. Mm. If that person was not there because I and my wife are all working, there is no way I could come to NTV studios. So you see that it is very important to recognize and all of, all of us be part of unpaid care and domestic work. Two, mm. uh, it is good to reduce uh, the amount of labor that we normally leave to only one category of people, mm. and especially to the women and girls. Look at that mother at home mm. who wakes up at 6 a.m. and she goes back to bed at midnight. Mm. And many people would say, she's not working. If you ask the men like me who have uh, wives, most of them will tell you, my wife does not work. Mm. She's always at home. But actually, you go to that home and ask that wife, mm. what time do you wake up? What time do you go to sleep? Mm. They will tell you from 6 up to 6 a.m. up to 12 p.m. Mm. They, are, they are actually working. 
The only thing is that the kind of work they are doing is not being recognized, mm. and that is why we are here in this campaign. Indeed. Speaking of yes. uh, recognition and also inclusiveness, we do recognize the persons with disabilities that are actually watching this show. This is a very inclusive conversation. We do have Maureen Nambalira on sign language to ensure that any of our PWDs that are watching this show are not left out. So let's continue this conversation on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on unpaid care and domestic work in that regard. Let me also bring in Peace Musimenta. She is a lecturer, a teacher and researcher in the School of Women and Gender Studies at the Macquarie University. Thank you for joining us once again. Peace, Musimenta. Thank you, Romeo. Indeed. You did a situation analysis in three districts over this same issue, unpaid care and domestic work. Bring us up to speed with what you found out. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Romeo, and the, mm. and the listeners Indeed. and the viewers. Uh, we did this study in Kabong, Kampala, and Kavari. Mm. Um, that was in 2018. Mm. And the findings were really shocking mm. because we found that uh, women were actually in, in Kavari, they were looking at the, all these activities that are not paid for, the, what we call unpaid care work, as women's work. And because of that, we found that men were, who didn't even have uh, formal employment would leave home to go and sit in the, sit, in the centers to have uh, conversations with their, uh, their peers, to also d drink alcohol, and then come back home to ask for food. And that uh, brought out what we are missing and what we as a country is suffering mm. if we don't recognize and pay attention to the unpaid care work. This is work that helps uh, the upbringing of children, mm -hmm. actually nurturing labor, future labor. Social reproduction. Social reproduction, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, as a country, we need to come together and begin to rethink the way we treat and the way we look at unpaid care work. Mm -hmm. All right, if you are a mother, single mother, if you will, and you're watching this show right now, you should know that unpaid care and domestic work accounts for over $10 trillion globally. That is 13% of the global GDP, but yet all this is not being included in the various GDP calculations in the various jurisdictions in the world. Very callous. Um, what comes to your mind, um, Mr. Wilson Senyonyi, when you hear of such facts? $10 trillion is a lot of money, 13% of the global GDP. Yet uh, so many of these jurisdictions are not putting into account the, actually the contribution of the unpaid care and domestic, domestic work economy. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, that is actually we are in this campaign, which is doubled a lasting change. Indeed. We want to bring to change in terms of shifting the normal narrative, mm. uh, saying this work is for women, this work is for girls. All of us ought to do something. And uh, one of the issues I want to point out is in terms of policy. Um, if policy does not recognize unpaid care and domestic work, then we shall see that even the government will lose a lot of revenue mm. it will have generated. For example, mm. if the girl child is left at home, especially like in the village setting, they already say the girl should remain here to take care of the baby, mm. to to do the washing. This girl will not go to school. They should have wanted the to get a degree. Yeah, uh -huh. that mm. means that will have an implication even on the kind of the future that they will have, mm. including the job. So they will not have a good job. And this is actually a job that the government would have taxed and be able to get the revenue. So if it's not done, then that means even the government itself mm. is, going to to, is going to lose a lot of revenue. Mm. Um, secondly, People will not be productive. Mm. Look at Wilson if I decided uh, to remain at home because there is no one who is going to support me Indeed. to do the kind of work that is actually done by some people when I'm at mm. work. It means I will not be able to go and work. Mm. And at the end of the day, that home will remain very poor. And at the end of the day, the kind of children that I will have, they will not be able to go to school. They will not be able to do anything that is valuable. Mm. And at the end of the day, affecting also well, the Wilson, I was thinking about this yesterday uh, before this conversation. And I was telling myself, what about uh, the people on the firms, the women in the informal sector? You do know that largely the women are engaged in agriculture. Mm -hmm. So if you are talking about unpaid care work, does it stretch to the firms? It, it because does. I have reports that the women go to the firms, they do the firming, but when the when they are done harvesting, it's the men who sell the proceeds and drink all of them. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is really very, very, very critical mm. because, <coughs> I'm sorry, um, if all these people that mm. do that labor-intensive work, at the end of the day, they are not part and partial of even sharing the proceeds from what they have been laboring for. Mm. At the end of the day, we shall not realize good mm. impacts from the kind of work that they have been doing. Mm. Look at that mother, that girl who goes to the garden, and then she harvests. After harvesting, someone comes and says, you know, these yields come from my land. Indeed. You know. And the head of the household. And now decides to take to the market mm. and say, after selling, the money is not even brought at home. Indeed. It does not reach. Will Sonsoni is a gender and protection coordinator with Oxfam. Pismo Simendo is a lecturer and also teacher, professional teacher, if you will, and researcher in the School of Women and Gender Studies under Macquarie University. So she comes with a wealth of information when it comes to gender parity and so forth. But the COVID-19 pandemic has wrought a lot of havoc mm -hmm. on so many people in this country. Now, you and I know very well, Pismo Simendo, that the people in the households, the women who have had to take care of the sick, the elderly, the children are now back home. Yes, it's now the women who are taking on all those tasks of unpaid care and domestic work, taking care of COVID-19 patients and so forth. Now, how has that impacted unpaid caregivers in this country? Thank you very much, Romeo, mm. and thank you very much, viewers. I think uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has really revealed, it has unraveled the gender inequalities that we always mm. bypassed in our conversations. Indeed. First of all, when you look at unpaid care work, which was seen as women's work, it came out clearly that this is not women's work. Because in some families, women were actually forced to go and sleep in, the, in, in, their, in their market to, 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 to do business. Indeed. And they left their husbands at home with the children. So I, I wanted to begin from there to show that actually involvement in unpaid care work by both men and women, girls and boys, is very beneficial to us all. If you leave them husband at home and you are in the market and the, due to COVID-19 uh, pandemic mm -hmm. mitigation measures, you are not supposed to come back, you stay there, wh how are the children going to eat? Mm -hmm. That means we need to really look at this and uh, embrace it as our role. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, uh, it also disadvantages our men. Sometimes when you th look at men, they are really uh, vulnerable. Mm. You are at home, you are diabetic, you mm. need food anytime, and because you are not allowed to go to the kitchen. Mm. In our study, we found in, in Moroto that a man who goes to the kitchen is named Roromoti, which means a man who counts meat, a man who is greedy. So in that way, mm. they are limiting you from participating in unpaid care work mm. or domestic work, mm. but you are missing out. You want food at a, a certain time when you, maybe your ha wife is not there mm. or you don't have a maid, you can't go and cook it. Mm. So who is be, you, you are losing. Uh, again, when your children are sick and your wife is not there, w instead of taking them, you want to wait for her. Mm. So we really need to look at it that it is ours. Mm. And COVID-19 has really showed mm. that this is essential. Mm. It is critical, although it is not valued. Because uh, although I, when they were categorizing essential mm. workers, I didn't, I didn't hear about domestic they workers. They are not essential. But they were this not is really essential workers. Because they've been doing the most. Mm. Uh, they are the ones who, without them, mm. these essential workers cannot work. Indeed. You can't leave home without an, uh, someone to do this work. And also talk about uh, the girls who were forced into compromising situations affecting their ch childhood and also their health mm. in this pandemic when they were forced to do uh, this unpaid care and domestic yes. work. Mm. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Romeo. Mm. Uh, and, and I think in many of our communities, mm. even in the research that we did, we, re we discovered that we need structures in place mm. to protect girls and women from the, uh, the domestic violence, from uh, the uncalled for violence you know, as they go to fetch water mm. to look for firewood. Mm. And we found in Karamoja where uh, boys mm. were sometimes at home and the girl, young girls are going to look for firewood. Mm. So uh, in terms of uh, responsibility, collective responsibility mm. and for gender equality, we really need to support uh, those who are doing unpaid care work. And, and I, I also want to challenge the economists because we have always seen these theories which show that labor is available and you don't even know how someone comes to, to, pro, to, to provide the labor. Mm. We don't look at what is it what is the opportunity cost of this man coming to, mm. to work 
oh, this woman coming to work. There must be something that you forego mm. for you to come and work effectively in, in, in the foremost mm. sector. And, and for really COVID-19 has shown how unprepared mm. we are in terms of gender equality. Mm. If you look at SDG 5, which mm. is looking at gender equality and uh, women's empowerment, mm. uh, uh, and the target uh, 5.4, which is looking at reducing the unpaid uh, care work, we are not prepared. And mm. COVID has really shown what, what mm. we are. And that our girls who are supposed to be empowered cannot be empowered. You cannot empower me when you are crippling me, when you are stopping me from attending school because mm. I have to be um, the one who is going to go with the ma mother, to go to the mm. market, to cook for the other children when the boys are mm. playing football. Mm. And indeed, in the home settings, we've actually called for continued learning where mm -hmm. learners get to use the internet. They cannot do this, especially the girls, if you're telling them to do 90% or 100% of the good. chores in the household. Expand more on that. Yes. Mm. Uh, I have actually seen even some women are finding it very challenging mm. to do uh, work at home. You are in the Zoom meeting and you hear milk is spilling, the children are crying, and everyone expects you to be the one to intervene. Indeed. Uh, it has happened uh, where you really want to smash this child who is disturbing mm. because you are the one who is looking after them. Mm. Uh, uh, following the theory that the one who produces who, uh, the child mm. nurtures it. Mm. Uh, it, it is really constraining. If I have an appointment and I'm supposed to deliver this stock, mm. and then I'm supposed to be the one cooking and looking in the kitchen and cleaning here mm. and there, it means I'm not going to be productive. Mm. And as a result, I'll not be paid. Okay. So it's important to look at this in terms of the opportunity cost. Great and insightful conversation I'm having with Peace Musimenta, lecturer and also researcher in the School of Women and Gender Studies, Macquarie University, and also Wilson Sanyanyi, he is a Gender and Protection Coordinator under Oxford. We are not having this conversation so that we call on to the women to be superior over the men. We're just calling for gender parity, that you be able to help your wife when it comes to chores at home, 50-50 do something as she also mm -hmm. uh, does the most not because you want them to be stepping on your heads or anything like that we do know that this is a highly particular uh, society but then we need to actually liberalize some issues and then to, if we are to ensure gender parity in this country now the main question is does unpaid care and uh, domestic work merit attention as a policy issue that is something that is going to be expanded more by wilson senyonyi wilson does it merit attention as a policy issue yes and paid care work and domestic work is mm. very, very critical and pertinent, especially when it comes to policy influencing. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, look at uh, our members of parliament, the female members of parliament uh, who are here. If uh, we do not uh, recognize their uh, care roles, because some of them actually have babies, I'm glad that the parliament of Uganda has got a, a baby care center whereby if someone is entering parliament can be able to leave uh, her baby being taken care of. But look at other settings. Do we have these baby care centers? So what happens? Look at uh, that teacher down there in that primary school who has to come with her baby, get actually another person's child to take care mm. of her own child when she's in class. Mm. That has a lot of implication when it comes to policy uh, influencing. So the members of parliament that uh, are watching us, I would uh, uh, urge you to make sure that when it comes to legislation, please make sure that uh, unpaid care and domestic mm. work is part and partial of the laws that we are putting in place. Look at the issue of infrastructure, mm. <coughs> which really affect a lot, mm. especially women and girls. Um, women and the girls tend to spend a lot of time while they are looking for water. Mm. And I have actually experienced this previously uh, where I stay in Namgongo. Uh, during COVID lockdown, we, we had no water mm. and I had to go to one of the wells to get some water. Mm. And I had to spend about two hours. And when I looked at the people who were there, most of them were women and the girls. Mm. What does that mean? When we are planning about infrastructure, we need to recognize that the issue of water is well catered for. For example, I'm happy that with the Katosi water plant right now that has been put in place by the government of Uganda, now in Namgongo water is not a big problem. Yes, so that is good that mm. it has reduced the amount of time women and girls would be spending looking for water. But mm. if we don't 
plan for this to include them in our policies, then it will be very, very difficult for that girl child, for that women, uh, yeah. woman to be able to engage in other productive activities, which most of us uh, do not recognize. Mm. Um, secondly, if we look at, in, mm. at uh, the COVID situation that, that we are in, s uh, some people were not recognized as essentials, like the lecturer put it. I, actually, for me, as a man and with the experience of having uh, children, if you asked me uh, the people I would term as essentials, mm. there is no way I would leave out those people that take care of my children mm. at home. Because if they are not there, my home will bec uh, become to a standstill. Nothing will be able to move. But this begins also from policy. Eh, that when we are coming up with policies, we should be able to recognize that unpaid care work is part and parcel. So for everybody outside there who is part of the COVID committee, whether the district or mm. anywhere, mm. please ensure that unpaid care and domestic work is it's part and parcel. This is what the leaders do not understand what they're saying. They mm. think this is a household problem. But this is a national problem. When you engage women in unpaid care and domestic work, you're actually keeping them in the households. They're not going to be part in education. They're not going to be part in civic life, leisure, and so forth. Factors that could have helped them propel development in the nation. Mm -hmm. So you, you're largely leaving this uh, labor force untapped and you're keeping them in the houses. Musimente. Yes. Thank you very much. I want to say that unpaid care uh, is very, very critical. And f first of all, as a substantial amount of population, uh, a substantial amount of the population mm. uh, investing their time and energy, especially mm. women and girls. Indeed. And this has norms that really push women and girls there and they don't allow them. Secondly, if unpaid care and domestic work is not well done, the population suffers in mm. well-being, the population suffers, it lacks, there is no happiness, the economy suffers, and the government is burdened mm. because it has to come in mm. to intervene. Thirdly, when women and girls spend more time in this uh, uh, economy, they they are uh, they forego education mm. they are for they are forego uh, health seeking mm. they forego income earning and they forego leisure and mm. all these have implications on their lives mm. and once the woman is and the girl is affected therefore the whole household is affected mm. and the community is affected so it is not an issue of the women and men only but it is a community issue it is a national issue mm. and it can also become a, a security threat and we cannot say that government is not doing anything some of these issues were inculcated in the national development plan three <laughs> yes. in a bid to actually ensure gender parity when it comes to unpaid care and mm. domestic work but uh, would like to know have we made any progress on uh, actually convincing these individuals to, insti uh, to institute policies on unpaid care and domestic work? Have we made any progress? Uh, thank you very much. Mm. Uh, as researchers, we are doing a lot. Mm. But there is still uh, gaps in the data available. But also, this is something that has uh, social norms and practices around. It, is, it takes time to convince um, uh, policymakers that this is an, an issue mm. because some of the policymakers are brought up or are socialized to believe that this is not their work because of the patriarchal oh, nature yes, of our society yes mm. and so as we try to do more research mm. we need to work together the activists the academia the policymakers to come together as one uh, as, as, as one mm. so that we think together and we rethink how this can change but of course changing norms and practices mm -hmm. take long what I would advise is that we begin inculcating this in the uh, curriculum when we are teaching our children because some some books still have girls sweeping and mm. boys playing football mm. they, they still have who cooks at home mommy cooks at home who who buy who pays fees daddy pays fees so the curriculum Forgetting. Plays a role. so it <laughs> Yes, it's, uh, it's still yeah. a long way mm. that we have to go back and change the, the structures and also the curriculum so that the children we teach mm. learn to know that the, doing this work has nothing to do with gender. Mm. How yeah. can the national budget as a planning tool help us address this issue of unpaid care and domestic work? Wilson Senyini. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, uh, I'm very glad that uh, we have been working mm. uh, 
closely with different uh, ministries, which we call any ministries like Minister of Water, Minister of Energy, to ensure that in, in their planning processes and paid care and domestic work is very well recognized mm -hmm. and it is part and partial of what they are doing. Like I was giving an example of uh, infrastructure when it comes to, to, to water. Water is uh, an essential mm -hmm. that none of us can live without it. So if in our budgeting uh, processes that begin from the local level mm -hmm. up to the national level, we should be able to touch those areas that uh, need to address unpaid care and domestic work. So for example, if like in, in the city here, uh, tap stands are extended to people's homes, then they will be able not to walk long distances that uh, they are looking for firewood. When it comes to people who, like me, wake up every day to go to office and work, mm -hmm. um, uh, we should be able to plan and have in place baby uh, care centers. Because you can imagine that mother who has to leave her home maybe 10 kilometers away to come to office, if her baby is not well catered for, then that alone will stop her from working. Yet, actually, her knowledge, her expertise is very needed mm. in terms of uh, developing uh, this country. Then uh, the other bit which I want to urge all of the viewers to do is even in your budget at home. Mm. Let's now leave uh, aside the budget uh, that the government normally comes mm. up with, but in your own budget at home, have you put something to take care of unpaid care and mm. domestic work? Mm. Look at uh, those people we call maids or um, or support people at our homes. Mm. Who is paying? Are we leaving this actual responsibility? Not a burden. Mm. It is a responsibility mm -hmm. that, you know, since my wife is, is working, she should be able to pay the maid. Really, this is someone mm. that is supporting all of you. I'm one of those, and I want to urge the fellow men mm. that when you are coming up with your, your, your budget, please ensure that and paid care and domestic work is part and partial of your budget. Mm. With that, we shall be able to see that everybody is prospering yes. and we take this country at another level. Even the world, by the way, mm. unpaid care and domestic work is a global issue. Indeed. Look at someone who has to go for that conference, uh, maybe to the US or even to Nairobi Actually, or anywhere. During this pandemic, it has <laughs> affected each and every uh, country. Women yes. in the UK, India, America, mm -hmm. even Nigeria here, South Africa, our neighbors here. Unpaid mm -hmm. care and domestic work has been an issue that yes. has been taken center stage, at least since I, I had of this pandemic beginning in August of 2019. Mm -hmm. Women were actually being ready to actually do all the domestic work, and mm -hmm. the men wanted to go out there. So we are saying the men spend less than eight hours but the women are spending more than 20 hours on unpaid care and domestic work. So we are saying uh, we are exploring the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on unpaid caregivers and the economy. We shall come back uh, with that conversation on how that issue has uh, brought about a rise in domestic violence in our households. That conversation shall continue shortly after this break. We return. Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us at uh, NTV at One. Shall be coming your way roughly less than 30 minutes from now. But right now we're exploring the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the unpaid caregivers and domestic work. So I still do have Pismo Musimenta. She's a professional teacher. She's a lecturer. She's a researcher in the Women and Gender Studies and in the School of Women and Gender Studies and the Macquarie University. We also do have Wilson Senyanyi. He is a, a gender and protection officer. Yes, uh, coordinator in charge of uh, Oxfam Uganda, gender and protection coordinator with Oxfam Uganda. Let's continue and talk about the issue of rising cases of gender-based violence over this issue of unpaid care and domestic work. Peace, Musimente. Mm. Thank you very much, Romeo, and thank you very much, uh, viewers. Uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic, mm. a lot has been revealed. And as I, I, I was saying, when we look at the household, the household is not a homogeneous institution. We have different, uh, we have men and women, boys and girls, mm. and they all are entitled to different activities uh, according to our societies. In this case, when you find a husband who was used to getting out of the home and now is confined in the home, he will expect to eat lunch 
at a particular time. And remember now that we have homeschooling, the children are at home, their uh, activities have increased, washing of clothes has increased, cooking, cleaning, all these activities have increased. Mm -hmm. there, there are some cases where husbands are not patient and they expect food uh, at, at one as lunch. Mm -hmm. So when this doesn't happen, uh, 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 of course, there are some conflicts that arise, and in most cases, they end up in fights. Mm. And, and, and we also find that uh, when women are going to fetch water and, and they are going to look, fetch, uh, look for firewood, sometimes they delay they, they, along the way, uh, especially in the rural areas. And this also brings about conflicts which may end up in fights. We also find, uh, of course, women get tired, uh, especially those who are... Uh, on average, uh, don't have enough money and therefore they have to do everything themselves and they are not able to employ uh, uh, housekeepers. And so when she's tired, definitely uh, there are other roles that will suffer and, and that can also mm. uh, result in gender-based violence where the husband demands his conjugal rights and this woman who has been in the mm. work from morning to evening, she, she is tired. So th there are a lot of issues that arise. If this uh, uh, unpaid care work is not redistributed, is not shared for m between men and women, girls and boys. Mm. And this has been really clear. Uh, it came out clearly with uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Do you know what's worse, Peace Musimeta? Women who are already working have to give a paid work to actually do unpaid work. Expand more on that. Yes. Uh, actually, this is what the, the theory of labor supply mm. in, in insinuates. Mm. It ex you, the firms expect labor, uh, laborers to come and get jobs mm. because they are willing to get income. But they don't look at what is it that this man has to forego, mm. or what is it that has to be in place for this man to come and work. Uh, in most cases, there are negotiations behind, and in some cases, because this is a patriarchal setting, the man will say, now that our children are young, I think you are the one, to, you better stay home, stay home mom, and then I go and work mm. and I look, look after the family. And in most cases in Uganda, most of our jobs cannot really, uh, one, the, the single owner cannot look after the family. Mm. So you find there is a, a lot of pressures on the husband, and the woman who is at home expects the husband to, to, to support. I, I, secondly, you will find that uh, when uh, this husband of mine buys land, he will think of me as not working, and therefore this is his land, this is his property. Mm. I have not contributed, I've been staying at home not working, mm. irrespective of all this that we are talking about, the un unvalued and paid care work, which is actually enormous. So this has also brought conflicts, mm. and it has led some women also to begin thinking of uh, hiding what mm. they can hide, mm. so that they are able to have a fallback position. Mm. So this is uh, actually a challenge, not for the men or women, but also for our communities yeah. at large. All right, Pierce Musimeta, thank you very much. Let's also bring in the gender and protection officer with Oxfam International. That is uh, Wilson Senyany. Uh, Wilson, let's talk about another issue. Um, all these disputes happen in a home setting, in a domestic or private setting. So mm -hmm. what mechanism does the gender ministry have for dispute resolution in, for people in unpaid care uh, work when it comes to domestic or private settings? Yeah, thank you very much, mm. and I'm glad that uh, Oxfam, with our partner ONET, we have been working very closely with the Ministry of Gender Labor and Social Development, even during uh, this COVID uh, situation. And one of the things that we have done together is mm. to create awareness mm. for people to be able to recognize and collectively participate in care work, because sometimes some of these disputes in the home are as a result of who is doing what and how. I will give you uh, an example of uh, caring for the children, which many people do not recognize as care work. So as you on your, on your laptop uh, are participating in this meeting, the children are coming around you. They want also to be able to touch on the laptop and you're pushing them away, not knowing actually someone has been going through that every other day. Mm. So what we are doing is even in situations where at home there are misunderstandings, people should be able to get counseling, they should be able to go for support, they should be able 
to do work collectively so that one does not bear all the burden of doing all this, the, this work at home. The other thing we have done um, with the ministry, which I will also add that it continues, is to work with the different stakeholders. Right from the national level um, down to the grassroots, uh, we are here in Kampala, we are working closely with Kampala Capital City Authority to give recognition to unpaid care and mm -hmm. domestic work. We have also worked with uh, now Gulu City, the authorities there. We had even uh, a full project launch uh, on We Care Work. So I'm very glad that uh, even in, in, in Gulu, we are very supported um, and I'm sure the leaders there are taking this force to make sure that uh, the locals are able to appreciate and participate in and care and uh, domestic work. Then also, we are working closely with the members of parliament, but as you know that uh, uh, we have just had our new members of parliament <laughs> come come on board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we shall be uh, working uh, with them to ensure that as they legislate, they also recognize and mm -hmm. make sure that... Well, the Wilson, the same, new, the same new MPs come with bad news. They've come <laughs> with a set of new taxes that are going to wreak havoc on our people, especially those in the unpaid care and uh, domestic work sphere, and to also increase inequality. Let me task Peace Musimenta to expand more on that. How will the current budget and the tax policies we've instituted affect the people in the unpaid care and domestic work sphere? Thank you very much, Indeed. the moderator. Uh, and actually, for, mm. for in, my th in, in the study that we did, mm. we need the structures in place. We need to make... Uh, and paid care work uh, favorable but also attractive to men and so if you tax electricity and you tax gas and you tax you. Uh, washing machines nice. in other words if you don't make these uh, facilities available and easily accessible and affordable then you are going <coughs> to exacerbate the gender inequalities because most men who are who were socialized not to do this kind of work to bring them on board, you need to create some environment that is attractive, first of all, to bring them on board. Let me get this straight. Peace yes. Musimenta, you are saying that right now men cannot engage in unpaid care and domestic work because it is too tough. But if you had an easier way of making it so, so easy for the men, they would actually engage in unpaid care and domestic work? Yes, if it is attractive, yes, they will. If a man okay. ha can cook on gas, mm. it is easy for him to boil water, mm. to boil an egg. But when it comes to making a, a charcoal stove and going into that mm. drudgery, they tend to run away. Mm. Uh, they, they don't appreciate it mm. because they were not socialized. We are not blaming them. We are blaming where we are coming from. I told you in the schools, they still teach children that women are the ones who cook at home. Mm. And, and one time my son was singing a song of happy family where mommy is cooking and daddy is driving and I was the one driving. Mm. So they still have this misinformation. There are still norms and practices which mislead mm. our children. And so if we tax these facilities, mm. then we are going to make uh, uh, the situation worse mm. for women and girls uh, mm. because we, we cannot attract the people who have not been mm. there unless we have something very attractive. You remember when we used to have secretaries as women? Mm. When computers came in, we can now see men as secretaries. So Why? Because the typewriters were hard for us. We are, yes. <laughs> so yes. we need the taxes. Mm. Uh, we, we need to reduce the taxes. So mm. the budget should actually, uh, uh, there should be a budget for those resources that are going to assist in the unpaid care work. <coughs> All right, Wilson. Yes, Senyoni. Let's also talk about something the government should do. By the way, if you're watching this conversation, you're talking about the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on unpaid caregivers and the domestic yes work. We also do have Maureen Nambalira ensuring that our persons with disabilities are not left out. This is largely an inclusive conversation, and inclusion is what we are calling for on the part of government. That's why I'm going to task Wilson Senyoni with this next uh, question that is very, very pertinent. What should government do in the post-COVID-19 recovery era, especially on this issue of unpaid care and domestic work to ensure that we do not fall into the same trap where women are having to deal with all the work burden in the household settings. Thank you very much, moderator. Yes, so I want to summarize this. Mm -hmm. uh, Don't use, summarize. Using four hours. We still have time. <laughs> <laughs> using four hours. So number one is uh, to recognize unpaid care and domestic work mm. as a gender issue. I see. With that, 
all of us will be able to realize that we have a role to play. Inculcating it right. in the National Development Bank, is it a start? Um, yes, we should have it uh, implemented because I'm glad that actually this is now part of the National Development Plan 3. Mm. So, but we are looking forward to how this is going to be uh, implemented. Mm. So it should be recognized at all the different levels and as I was saying, it is, should start right from the home. Then it comes to the community and then to the national level up to the global level. Mm. Number two, it is to redistribute work. Redistribute and pay care and domestic work. If you are in a home, we should not let only one category of a given gender do all this work right from taking the children to school, washing, cooking, we should be able to share these responsibilities because actually if we leave all this work to just one person, it means the person will be overburdened and mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it has even economic implications. This person will end up in the hospital mm -hmm. and what happens to the resources of the family, instead of using them to develop uh, that home, the resources will be spent on taking care of the bills of this person. Mm. And also that at national level, it is the same thing. If all these burdens are left to just a given category of people, it means even our health budget will be uh, affected. We shall have many people in uh, hospitals instead of having less. So we should be able to redistribute this work. The other one is uh, on a representation. Representation means that uh, uh, we should have the focal persons, the good role models, come up and participate and, uh, and be part and partial of all planning uh, processes. I'm glad that in, uh, in our parliament we have women representatives. Mm. Even when you go at the district council, we have got a side of them being women. So I'm very sure that if these women representatives play their role, on unpaid care and domestic work, then it, sh it shall be part and partial of what they are doing, and we shall not now be talking about uh, lack of water uh, at home, at health centers, not having these baby care centers, because all of us shall have recognized that all of us have a role to play. Then the other one is uh, to reduce on the caring burden. The caring burden, you know, where we just leave one person to do everything. Someone has to do the domestic work, someone has to run to the hospital, someone has to run to fetch water, someone has to run to do this. We should be able to reduce that. And the other way, especially to the government, is on reducing the taxes, hmm. uh, especially on what we use uh, domestically. So the gas, eh, those who are able to afford, if they can reduce taxes hmm. on, on the gas, we can even see actually that more men will be motivated mm. to take over some of these roles that uh, they have not been uh, appreciating. Mm. When it comes to um, uh, when it, it it comes to water, mm. let the water bills be reduced so that everybody can be able to afford uh, to get water from his or her home. You can imagine. If someone does not have money because water is very expensive and has to walk all these long distances alongside the other caring roles that the person has to perform, so that will make people run away from some of these roles of unpaid care and domestic work. And I would also urge the different stakeholders, when you have uh, any platform, mm. any meeting, mm. if you are a religious leader, use that platform to sensitize people mm. to be able to recognize mm. and uh, appreciate that each one of us should be able to play a role in and pay the and domestic mm. work. It is not actually necessary for the benefit of others. Mm. It benefits us more than those people that we are looking mm. at. <coughs> All right, let's talk about feasibility and whether or not this reality can be painted right here in Uganda, which is a highly patriarchal economy. Peace, Mosimente. What would be that ideal unpaid care? Okay, what would the, let me put it this way, what is the ideal unpaid care work economy and what would that look like in Uganda's context? What do we need to do to ensure that we make this economy fit for all? 
Thank you very much. Uh, you know I'm a social scientist. Yes. I, I, I ask critical questions. Mm. The first question I would ask for us to have an ideal care economy mm. is how much would one pay if one had to buy these services? Mm. If you wanted a, a caretaker, someone to stay at home, your security and then washing, all those activities, how much? If we get economists mm. to help us account, measure, and, and, and attach a monetary value to that, that question would help us to get an ideal care economy. Secondly, how much money does the individual lose by doing and pay care work rather than paid work? Mm. So if I, if I spend all the time at home, mm. how much money do I lose? So if we get those questions answered, mm. we can easily say yes, for us to have a care economy that is inclusive, mm. that is gender responsive, we need to divide roles. Mm. Uh, if, if my husband is not working and stays at home, he can do it rather than saying in our community, I am the one who married you and therefore you are the one to stay even mm. when you have a job. Mm. Or constraining me first in the morning, wake up very early, pre prepare before I go to work. Mm. That affects my productivity at workplace. Mm. And if I'm at workplace and I'm calling home and I'm making orders, mm. it also affects productivity. Mm. So we need to look at it from an economics perspective where we lose amount of money mm. by not doing it right. So given that this is a patriarchal society, mm. we need relearning and learning and learning mm. so that we learn these things that we learn, what we were taught when we were growing up. Mm. Things change. To and demystify uh, yes, most of those. some of these mm. norms and practices mm. are no longer valid. And COVID has shown this, that these are no longer valid. What we used to treasure is no longer treasurable. Mm. Uh, we used to think men cannot stay at home. What is happening? Mm. They were confined for 42 days and you are there at home. What mm. are you doing? So unless you relearn and unlearn what you learned, mm. you are go we are going to get a challenge. Of course, Peace Movement, yes. women did the most during this COVID-19 pandemic. They were taking over 200% of the unpaid care and domestic mm. work within the home settings. So meaning during the next, I don't know, lockdown during the next pandemic, if it's com it comes around, it is largely still here. Should we make women essential workers? Definitely. I would love <laughs> that. They are doing the most. <clears throat> yes, they are doing the most. And we have seen it. We did a study with the EPRC, Economic Policy uh, mm. Research Center, and we found that actually women who were sleeping in the markets mm. were the ones taking care of the homes. Y after getting money, you get a border border cyclist to take money home, to take food home. Mm. So they are actually essential workers, mm. and domestic and paid care work is essential. These are essential services. Without these, without these, actually, I, I would summarize it and say, if not well distributed across genders within and outside the households, heavy care work uh, can negatively affect employment, earnings, uh, education, training, mobility, health, and well-being. Mm. Uh, and, and therefore, with all that, people who do this unpaid care work, mm. they are essential workers. Mm. It's, it goes without saying that these are essential workers. Should government increase the space uh, to inc uh, for genuine participation of women and these rights organizations to actually also offer their two cents in the national budget? And not only the policymakers, the legislators, sitting in one small room and coming up with all these resolutions. Should we have the women involved in the budgeting process and the women's rights groups organizations? Thank you very much. Mm. My response is yes. We should have more women mm. involved and be part and partial of all decision-making processes. Indeed. Right, and I will insist, from the home to the local government and then up to the national level. And that does not mean that we should now leave only the women to be able to influence anything to do with unpaid care and domestic work. Mm. So I would urge the fellow men that please when women raise up these issues, the men who are there, please support them. And as I said that this is not a one man's issue, a one woman's issue. It is a collective responsibility. Each one of us has to play a role if we are able to take this country 
to another level mm -hmm. of development. And of course, NMG shall continue disseminating information that the women and uh, girls need in a bit to actually realize this gender equality that we are looking for. We shall work with partners from UNH Ghana Women Network. They're not terrorists, just like the government say. They're not terrorists. They're doing the most on humanitarian grounds. So we shall work with UNH, we shall work with Oxfam and any other stakeholder to bring this to the attention of the policy makers. My name is Rome Busiko. Of course, I've had this conversation with Wilson Senyonyi, a protection and gender the coordinator under Oxfam. We also did have Peace Musimenta. She is a professional teacher, lecturer, and researcher in the School of Women's and Gender Equality right there under Macquarie University. Thank you very much for coming through. Peace Musimenta and Wilson Senyoni. Thank, Thank you, Romeo. And, and of course, you, this conversation Romeo. has come to an end. My name is Romeo Busiko. I'll largely return in less than five minutes to acquaint you with the latest information happening locally here in Uganda and elsewhere in the world. Good afternoon.